all time great to be with you. Harvey, great to have you with us on the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. All right, I said 77 days to the season opener. What's item number one on the agenda with 77 days to go? Win. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Win. Hey, we, that's, I mean, there, there's so many things, especially like, I don't know, now with, with everything that's changed and everything going on, um, it's, I don't know, you can get sidetracked, I guess, a lot and, and kind of, I don't know, focus on a bunch of different things that um, may kind of steer you one way or the other. But in, in the end, like, the end goal is to win. And, and we have one team, you know, that we're playing our first game against and, and um, you know, just focusing on beating those guys and, and playing the best game that we can. And, and yeah, really, really more than anything, I think a lot of the guys are, are starting to focus on themselves more than anything. I think they um, they realize they, they definitely have the talent to play against, you know, some of these really tough teams on the schedule. Um, but looking back at the season and stuff, I think a lot of, a lot of those close games and games that, that um, we had lost um, weren't necessarily the other teams being more dominant or just, you know, or beating us because, you know, they're much better. A lot of it was mistakes that we made and, and I guess self-inflicted wounds. So um, we, we got some good players coming back, a lot of good leaders on, the, on this team. And um, it, it's been fun to see, like, you know, the growth from just a little bit of spring that we had. You can tell these guys have, they're taking uh, a step in the right direction as far as, you know, capitalizing on last season and, and trying to fix those mistakes and taking it on themselves really to just get better. So. I want to dig into the running backs some more, but first I want to ask you this. So you were on the roster 06 to 09. 06, you end up redshirting, even though you get in the Tulsa game and score a touchdown. People forget, but I remember. Um, so six, that's a win against Utah. Seven, that's a win against Utah. Oh, wait, that's a loss. Oh, nine, that's a win. You were a part of three wins against Utah. Yet here we are sitting on a nine-game losing streak. Is there anything crazy or special or different that needs to happen to beat Utah? Um, I think with, with that game, it's man, it's so weird because you, um, you you tell yourselves not to get too emotionally involved, but you can't help it. Like it, just the rivalry and everything, it takes it to a whole other level, and and I think majority of those wins majority all of the wins that we had during those years it um i noticed we we came into the game not with i don't know the the like a, a vengeance or some kind of like anger towards those guys um it was more of a confidence about ourselves and what we were capable of instead of letting our emotions get the best of us and and um i think to me if, if these guys can Really, like I said, it just play poised, um, and and when it comes down to crunch time, just just keep focusing on our our team and ourselves and what we're trying to accomplish and and what we're trying to do as far as you know schematics and everything like that. We'll we'll be fine. We'll be just fine. The number two all time leading rusher in BYU football history and current running backs coach Harvey Unga with us on BYU Sports Nation. Speaking of the rivalry, now you have Devontae Henry Cole come from Utah to BYU. Well, well, well. There's an <laughs> added level of uh, intrigue to this matchup this year. He's a guy that BYU fans are very excited about. Um, what kind of impact do you expect Run DHC to have at BYU? Well, the, the cool thing about him is obviously he understands their defense. He, he knows... Uh, <laughs> intricate you know ins and outs of their defenses you know certain plays you know work against them certain plays don't um where to attack certain runs and and in the past game you know certain routes and stuff like that route concepts he he um he understands well so the that side of you know the game he, he definitely helps out a ton but um one of the things that i, I really admire about the kid is just over the past few weeks, getting to know him and, and diving into um, our offense, super mature, like just really, really hungry down to earth. And, and just every, every day he's, he's trying to learn and, and soak everything in. And um, I, I appreciate that a ton, especially, you know, for, for some of the younger backs, um, it, it's good to see that kind of leadership and, and somebody that has, 
that that type of maturity coming in it definitely helps out a ton let's right. talk about some of the other guys in the room as well lots of experience returning Lopini Katoa has been here for two seasons he's a junior Sione Fina had a nice couple of games there before a torn ACL I want to ask you about an update on him as well and then Jackson McChesney returns as well in that room yeah no it's I mean the I think one of the, one of the other guys too that's a sleeper is Tyler Algier um, oh th yeah thank you I totally missed yeah yeah but it's it's great like Obviously, through the last couple of years, we've kind of noticed um, the the running backs have towards the end of the season, our room gets a little slim. Um, but now, obviously, with DHC and and Beanie and Tyler and McChesney, um, it, it just there's there's a, a lot more depth, and and um, each each of those guys have had you know quite a bit of experience, and and I think now coming into this season, having that experience, um, the maturity level definitely bumps up a lot. It, it helps out a ton. And, and like you said, with Sione too, I, I think there's, there's a lot of different dynamics with each of the running backs and what they bring to the table. Um, so it'll, it'll be fun to see. And, and during spring, we, um, we bumped over Jackson Kalfusi as well too, to, to come and, and play running back as well. So it's, it's been fun to see like the, the growth and, and, you know, the strides that these guys have been making throughout spring and, and now leading into summer. Sione Finau plays in the middle of the season before in a tour in ACL, but he averaged six yards a carry and had, uh, you know, 69 yards plus in the last four games for him. Is he back from a uh, ACL? Is he good to go for the season? Um, It's kind of up in the air as of now. I mean, those, those so many people, they, they heal differently and, and guys – I mean, with with modern day medicine and, and physical therapy and everything like that, you see guys come back in six, seven months. Other guys, it takes nine. Some people, it takes a year. Um, right now, he is on track to make it. Hopefully, at the beginning of the season. But it's, I mean, you know, you never know. It's, it's hard to tell. And I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to sit here and act like I, I know a ton. But just following up with him and, and keeping tabs on him and talking with him and the trainers and stuff. They, they said he's been working his butt off and he's, he's, he's getting better and better each, each week. And um, they think he's a little bit further along than what they expected the timeline. But I, um, I kind of go in with the, what do you want to say? It, hoping for the best, but expecting the worst, I guess, which I don't know if I should do that, but. If, if he comes back early, then I'm like, all right, great. But if not, then we're, we're playing it safe and, you know, trying to manage it that way. Harvey, 11 weeks away from a potential start to the college football season, the depth chart is always an interesting conversation. We all yeah. want to know who's going to be the starter, who's going to be the number two guy. So, so just you, tell us now. When do you begin to zero <laughs> in on that balance and having your depth chart solidified? Um... Honestly, I like for from college and then playing after college, majority of the time, those depth charts, unless you've got a, a guy that's been the guy previously, I'd say, you know, middle of fall camp. Um, usually you can kind of tell who, who the guy is going to be, but um, it, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it could change. It could change any week. It could change any day. Um, and obviously, knock on wood, like injuries happen all the time. You pray that they don't. But um, yeah, I, I would say probably middle of the fall camp, um, I, you kind of notice a lot of guys start to kind of set their ones and twos and threes, setting up with the quarterbacks and having them take more and more reps with those certain quarterbacks and an offensive line unit and stuff. And so that's, that's kind of what I'm going to going with this but I mean for me I I, I think Beanie and Tyler obviously have the most experience out of any of the backs and to me those two guys are definitely you know the front runners for it and then with DHC coming in we'll, we'll see you know where he where he fits in with with everything and um, I'm not like any other coach I'm not gonna hand anything to anybody you know I'll, I'll make sure I want these guys to work for it I want them to earn it um, if you got to earn it, 
when I was here and, and, you know, there, there were some good bats and um, we, we had some good battles, but I definitely think, you know, if these, these guys will rise to the occasion and, and we'll, we'll make it work. We'll figure something out. I, th I, you know what? I thought I remembered you just came in and said, listen, I know Fui Vakapuna, you're like, good, whatever. Uh, I know Manase Tonga, you're like, good, whatever. But you just came in and you're like, hey, I just want to stay to Tim You're like, I'm kind of the guy here. No, you're right. You yep. didn't do that. You didn't do that. Um, um, let never <laughs> let's finish with this. Uh, we've been flashing back to some fun plays moments uh, in BYU history with different guys, that, um, and we want to do that with you, specifically the direct snap play in 08 at Utah. Now, this is completely intent to deceive, and it works this year. But the next year, it was called uh, illegal. I think they changed the, the rule, right? So walk, take us back to the 08 play, and, you know, Max Hall said, like quotes Anchorman to Austin Colley. Like, walk us through that. Yeah, so – I don't know if it was the Utah game that he – well, maybe he did. I, I thought it was the Air Force game that he had quoted Anchorman. Um, the, yeah, the oh, following the, Oh, season. the next year. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, cause, so it worked against Utah. But I, I do remember, like, during during the week um, when, when we're practicing the play, there was, there was a few times where the snaps were a little sketchy. And we, we thought coach and I was just going to pull it. We were like, right, he's not going to call it. It's, it's not looking great. Um, but we, we, we kept practicing, got into it. So then finally in the game, um, we were down there towards their goal line, ready to score. And I just remember Max calling the play. And I'm, I think, I, what do we call it? 69 hose? I think it was. Six, yeah, I, uh, 68 hose. Okay. Um, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, Wait, we're really gonna run this. Um, <laughs> so I'm over there, at, like, yeah, obviously lined up back behind him. I don't know how far, and I see him just veer off to the right, and he starts yelling. I can't really hear him because we're in the north end zone at Utah. It's loud as heck, um, and the whole time I'm like, I'm watching him like flailing his arms, yelling, but I I forget the ball is gonna be snapped without. Anyone saying said hi. <laughs> like, I'm watching him go over there. And then the corner of my eye, I see the ball snap. And I look, and like, luckily I catch it right in time. It was high and too, right? A little bit. It, yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't too bad. I just, yeah, it was dumb of me. I, I, I knew I should have been watching the ball, but yeah, good. I mean, got the snap, took off. And I just remember as soon as Max walks away, I watched like, Paul Kruger and all these defensive linemen just take a knee and they start looking at Max walk away. And right <laughs> as the ball snapped, our O-line just buries everybody. <laughs> and ended up walking in. But it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. It was, it was a good play. A man who has a history of running over Utah players into the end zone. <laughs> Harvey Unga. <laughs> yes. Outstanding stuff, man. Hey, uh, we appreciate the update on the running backs group. Uh, always nice to catch up with you. And it's good to see you back in the office. Appreciate it. Thanks, you guys. Always good to see you guys. You got it. Harvey Unga on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. That's great.